It's eight o'clock on Tuesday, the 21st of January. Soviet women agents are reported to have infiltrated the Greenham Common Women's Groups to spy on cruise missiles and to incite demonstrations. After yesterday's sharp fall in the value of the pound, it steadied in early London trading this morning. I'd like to welcome you to the London International Financial Futures Exchange. We're only three years old and we're modelled on a futures market that opened in Chicago in 1972. And just for the record, we call ourselves LIFE for short, LIFE with two Fs. LIFE trades money, not pounds, dollars, but interest rates. These traders are fixing the price of money for delivery in three or six months' time. Ten million contracts are traded here every year, and turnover is seven and a half billion pounds a day. Offer! I bid. I bid. I've got 15 offered at one here. Life attracts banks, brokers, and pension funds. The exchange is an option they use to maximize profits and minimize risk. They place their orders with the phone booths who transmit them by tic tac the traders on the floor. A trader can earn well over £100,000 a year. Trading is fast and sharp, and down on the floor they call it open outcry. Hey, John, you know two more working sports, hey. Hey. Yeah, I was born in Erith, in Kent. Went to school at Dartford Technical High School. Uh, left at 16. Didn't want to stay on to do A-levels, I had enough of exams. Just wanted to get out and, and work, earn some money. I started at Standard Chartered Bank. You know, they were paying quite well at the time. Uh, in comparison to some of my friends who started apprenticeships. I started in there and it just, it all sort of like snowball. You get into the, start in the computer centre, then went into the foreign exchange back up, and then pushed into the dealing room, then got a chance to go on the futures and, uh, that's why I'm there. I could sleep a couple of days after that. I had a couple of fans to sleep with the boys. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, see you in a minute, mate. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See you later. All right. Where are we? Hello, is uh, Kevin Davis here, please? Hello, Kevin. Um, have you got an opening call on the bonds, mate? But the euros didn't move a great deal. Citibank would have buying the euros. Yeah. There's been nothing going on with the bonds, is there? My dad's pleased that he's, you know, that I'm doing well, and so is my mum. I don't really think they know what I do. To be honest, they know that I'm dealing in money, and they know it's sort of well paid, and, and that's it, really. Although they've both been up to the exchange and stood there like with their mouth open, thinking, you know, what's going on here? Hey, 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 out, out! Hey, Angus and Phil. Back to Paul, uh, what's the size in the pit and uh, the prices? So, um, if the price at the moment is four, four, six, I'll be sitting in four bid, six offered. So, the bid is this way and the offer comes that way. And uh, for the for the what's the size in the pit, you do your on your is it like one, one, two, three, four, five, then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, then 10, 20, 30, 40s, or something like that. So, it's a form of tic tac that's uh, understood throughout the market, and uh, you know what I mean. So. To probably ordinary people, to actually think you can trade that amount of money in a day, you know, and the money sort of that's changing hands. I won't say not changing hands, but it's like me buying or selling the contracts. You know, in, in the euros, it's a million dollars. You know, you buy 50 of them, or sell 50, or buy 100, whatever. No, it's, the money's unreal. It's a numbers game in the fact that I stand in the pit and the guy gives me something to do and it's all figures. And he just shouts over me like sell 50 at some, so, so I'm dealing in numbers all the time. I turn around and hit various people in amounts. I'm writing numbers on my card and it's, it's, it's a numbers game. A financial future. I have to cut this one because I don't know. <laughs> uh, what is it? Oh, there is a good definition, actually. Um, I don't. I'm, you tell me, it's money. <laughs> I don't know. 
It's an agreement between two parties to buy or to sell a particular standardized quantity of a financial instrument at a future date, but at a price agreed today. We're not trading any of the physical commodities here. No wheat, no coffee, cocoa, orange juice. That's all done in other places. We are just trading financial contracts. And all we're doing is fixing the price today of a transaction that will take place at a specific time in the future. You've got to be, you've got to be alert. You've got to be quick, quick-minded. You've got, you've got to be loud, yeah. If, if you're not loud, you'll miss out on, on some of the stuff that's going on. It's like straight out of a market stall, isn't it, really? You know, uh, they're fresh, they're lovely, who wants my 10 at two? You know. <laughs> That's the stress side of the job, you know, and I think the errors, I think that's the worst part about the job, the errors. They can be costly. I would like to think myself I'd be doing this till I'm 50. I don't think you could take it till you're 50 anyway. Steve Davis, eat your heart out. You need releases from, uh, from the exchange. You know, this is why I come up here, it's so, it's so totally away from the market, you know, it's hectic up there, and down here it's so quiet, and that's a good release here for me. Oh, one's of the best wares, eh? Oh, no. yeah. 15, was it? Do what? Was it 15? I don't know. <laughs> Call it 10. <laughs> Call it. This is worse than trading, this is. Dad, at the moment, works the wages clerk for Lewisham Council. He doesn't particularly understand what I do. I mean, if I come up here and have a drink with him, probably the first thing he'll say to me, how's the pound doing today? I mean, I don't know. I don't trade the pound. You know, it's nothing to do with me. It's my partner. My partner's <laughs> let me down badly. At least I've scored. Where's he done? Say things like that. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean what? Yeah, I mean. And you still like to keep your friends, I think. I don't think it will change me in that way. I drink with your same friends, play football with your same friends. Oh, you know, I don't just start me. mixing in different circles oh, and oh, that sort that. of thing. Oh, yeah. Look at that kill. Yeah, you're playing your normal game, <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good game, that, isn't yeah. it? Up, up, up. I just feel very fortunate um, that I'm in doing something that I can do and hopefully do well and uh, sort of being paid money for it, and uh, been paying good money for it. Um, I suppose that if I actually sat down and thought about the unemployed, and if I was unemployed, you know, what would, what would my next step be? Um, I think it's quite worrying, really. Um, but saying that, I mean, I can't, I can't go into work and think about that all day long. <laughs> five for seven, five, seven. Five, 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 five for ten. I mean, locals are probably obviously earning the best money down there because they're trading for themselves. Locals probably haven't got a top side to their salary. Really, they can come in and get the market dead right and make uh, <laughs> making 20, 40, 50 grand a day. Not saying every day, but they can do it. They could also lose that money, so there's a, you know, there's a big risk involved. It's five feet, Paul. It's taking it. It's I it's a fever. It's just the uh, desire to do well, isn't it, really? We want, uh, everyone wants the best out of life, really, don't they? How much do you earn? I'd rather not say. <laughs> I'd rather not put a. I'd rather not put a figure on it. To be honest. But um, no, it is good money, and there are there's, there are people down there are well paid. The world had won. This is Robin Day with 40 minutes of news and comment this Tuesday lunchtime. Money, get away. Get a good job with more pay, and you're okay. Money, it's a gas. Grab that cash with both hands, 
me que estés. No car carry on for star daydream. Think I'll buy me a football team. Money, it's a crime. Shit, belly, but don't take a slice out of my pie. Money, so they say, is at the root of all evil today. But when you ask for a rise, there's no surprise that they're giving none away. Mark aside right now, check in. Twenty-one trading, Marsh Bond, Chicago. Twenty-one two. Twenty-one twenty-two. 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 Twen
different scents. You know, that's, uh, yes. Nearly caught a bloody great cold on Friday. You did, did you? Got away with it, thank God. Oh, it's been basically a bit... Uh, Is that with the dollar coming down? Well, in price. basically, yeah. I mean, it's just a symptom. I have voted Conservative. Now, I don't think I've ever voted Socialist. I think probably I would vote for the Green Party. You know, I'm interested in my environment as much as what I do in it. The market is a little bit unreal. And you know, at the end of the day, we, we've got to think about you know, broader issues away from people. Just about 50 of them in Thursday. Very, very far markets. Oi, oi. 20 and double out. Once you get to the magic age of 35, you're considered a veteran. You do feel physically wrecked some days. You know, you do feel it a bit more once you get uh, beyond 30. It, it does become quite hard work, and uh, you think, Christ, it must be an easier way of making a living than this. You know, you'll be standing there in the middle of the pit, and all of a sudden, the place will just take off. And you're just following the crowd, in a sense. We do quite often get rumours around the city. I mean, a few months back, there was a rumour spread around that Ronnie Reagan had a heart attack, which was later denied. And in fact, what had happened was that it was Lonnie Donegan who'd had a heart attack. You know, anybody who thinks they might be able to make a fast buck, I guess, could, could quite easily start a rumour up, and uh, you've just got to read between the lines, really. found it's very difficult to actually switch off during the week. I try not to give the missus too much of a hard time. She can tell instinctively whether it's it's been good or bad because you know I'm either quiet or I'm singing and dancing. I mean it, it's as simple as that. Thanks, Amy. Don't forget we've got a picnic list up at twelve. Okay, yeah. The world isn't going to stop and let you get off. You've got to stick with it. It is a bit like chasing rainbows, but hopefully there'll come a day when everything's off my hands and the kids are off my hands and my wife's out to work and I can actually sit down and put my feet up. I think most of us could probably live quite comfortably on in a, in a retirement situation on, on sort of 15 or 20,000 pounds a year at the, at the present time, any rate. So, uh, you know, one's got to look at in that sort of vein. One tends to, in this business, um, spend while you earn. Um, you know, we, as I say, we like to live hard and work hard and, and, and I suppose spend hard at the end of the day, but, um, um, and for that reason, it, it, it is difficult to, uh, to save a few pennies, but you just, you've just got to say, well, you know, I'm gonna put so much aside each month. What I'd hope to earn and what I'd actually earn are, to, again, two entirely different subjects. Um, different people have kind of different overheads, as it were. Come on, Nev, you can come home and give um, me a hand with this. Mine are fairly low-key. You might be in a, in a six-figure bracket. Um, there again, you might be scraping a sort of five-figure bracket. Don't get too near the edge. I mean, it's a bit like comparing a teacher with a professional footballer. I mean, a professional footballer's lifestyle is great up until he's about 35, but then things start to taper off a bit, you know, and it's obviously when, you, when your playing career is, is over, then uh, one's got to, to look to other means of earning a living. I wouldn't like people to think that we've always lived like this because um, in our early days, 
We worked extremely hard. We got up very early and travelled in the snow. Across the wilds of Suffolk. <laughs> and the wilds of Suffolk, mm. up on the train, back again. We only had the one car. And, um, you know, life was very difficult. We didn't go out to for meals. We didn't have a holiday for five years until we had our first child. We couldn't afford any children for five years <laughs> and, either, and, um, I remember. So I would say that we worked extremely harder than a lot of couples who perhaps, say, get a council flat or something like that the first year they're married and then have a baby. And that's the easy way out, but we worked extremely hard for our home. <laughs> Two pound each way flying properly. Just a lap. Two pounds each way flying properly. Just a lap. Just a lap. Just a lap. He said, actually, I saw something to call in on the way back. It's only down the road, you know, isn't it? And he's, he's, what? Oh, no. The Copler, as they go down the hill towards the... That's the first one you back. First downhill, Pam. Just my love. What a shame. I'm oh, really concerned about it. General rule from the Copler. Harry's only back the day. I see, we're up in London on Tuesday. We ought to come and see you. Yeah. Well, Royal Exchange, you know where the uh, mm. bank and all the rest of is. Mm. What, it's uh, Superstars oh, keeping me around? What, you and... Yeah, we're, um, we're meeting a man about a deal ah, we've got going on. Ah, a deal, eh? <laughs> yeah, it'd be lo lovely to see you. Tuesday? Yeah, this Tuesday, yeah. 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 So we've got, um, we got this lad who's taking us to Langham's first. So we'll give that a thrash. Well, uh, yeah, you enjoy that. That's, that's, yeah. You've not been there before. No. No, 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 that is, uh, Give it a thrash there, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Tough go out of sight here for a second. You're not playing. General rule as they reappear. Yeah. On the outside, the top load and great critical and top of the line. 5 of 31! 5 of 31! 5 of 31! 5 of 31! I suppose you could say, well, it's a sort of two horse race. The market's either going to go up or it's going to go down. You reckon that your calculated guess is going to be perhaps a bit better than the next man in the streets. I mean, I, there's a lot of money involved, but uh, I mean, it's not like sticking a uh, hundred pound on a, on a roulette wheel or a, I've never made any money in a casino in my life, but I'd rather fancy I've got a better chance uh, on the futures exchange. So it just... I mean, you, you, can you just work them for a little bit? So it's I mean, six. Uh, yeah, work them at six. It's, uh, I'm, I'm going to do my paperwork in a second. But, you know, mark it on close, it's good. Ten five. I've just left the last two lots that uh, I'm long of, and I left yeah. that with Tom. And all I'm, I'm going up and just going to sort my work out because I don't really want to. Like your limit, yeah. and you, you, you know, you've done well. Yeah. I suppose it's, I suppose it's the dry on is, is, is the good feels you get, really. And that's the, yeah. That's probably not... I've got to be happy with the result, really, and judging, you know, the way the market's gone. I, I kept out of trouble. I haven't made a fortune or anything uh, like that, but. Uh, you know, considering what went on, I, I had generally the right idea, avoided the trouble and have come out winning, but uh, I don't really know how much at this stage. Not, not a great deal, but um, profit's a profit, so... Two or three years ago, we were all getting the 8 o'clock train and thinking, Christ, this is... Uh... This is ludicrous, what are we doing? And three years on, we're getting a seven o'clock train, and uh, who knows what, what might be happening in another three years' time. I mean, we might be trading at two o'clock in the morning. I mean, uh, you can't tell. The way the world's moving at the moment, uh, we're talking about 24-hour trading. I mean, uh, who knows? We may find ourselves in that situation in, in a, a few years' time. Then where do you stop? March, June, and...
71, 5 and 10. I sold them out. That's 10. Hell of a day, though. Hell of a day, If you have a good day on the market and you do make a lot of money, you are, you're buzzing. You're on a high and you, you probably can't wait for tomorrow and when you come in the next day, you think about, uh, so if I don't have a, a day like yesterday, I'll be laughing or... And, um, yeah, you just, you know, you, you probably make money and you want more money. And that's, uh, in that respect, I suppose, it is like a drug. A possible further rise in interest rates, which was staved off at the last moment this morning by the intervention of the Bank of England, was one of the topics raised this afternoon in the House of Commons at Prime Minister's questions. Uh, Mr Speaker, obviously the government does not like increases in interest rates, but it is bound, in fact, to take action to ensure that keeping down inflation remains our top priority. The markets this week have been unsettled by the fall that has occurred in the oil price, but the Bank of England have maintained their dealing rates. So they say is the root of all evil today. But when you ask for a rise, there's no surprise. They're giving none away. <laughs>